few days after the crucifixion, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb in order to dress Jesus' body. She had now lost someone who was so close and dear to her and she wanted to perform one final act of service. And yet as she went, she was confronted with an empty tomb. I can't help but wonder if the emptiness of the tomb was also reflected in the emptiness of her own heart and life. The very last thing that she wanted to do, the very last act that she wanted to perform in the face of such a great loss, she was now unable to do. As she looks in a second time when there are angels there, even the presence of angels isn't enough to break her out of the distress that she feels. Why are you weeping, they say. Where's the body, she says. Do you know where it is? And then hearing someone behind her, she turns around and assuming that she's speaking to the gardener, now has a similar conversation. She's asked the same question again. Why are you weeping? And then a second one. Whom is it that you seek? She simply says, have you moved the body of my Lord? Do you know where he is? Just tell me and I will go and take care of the rest. Her response is incredibly gentle and kind to the gardener. She's seeking neither to apportion blame, even if he is the one who has done this thing, nor is she asking for any assistance, save to know where the corpse is actually laid. It must have felt like she was asking for everything. But remarkably, at the very point she thought she was asking for too much, she was actually asking for too little. She would have been happy with the corpse, but actually now the resurrected Lord was standing in front of her, the one who was victorious over sin and death itself. That question, whom are you seeking, is so important. Who are we seeking when we approach Jesus Christ? Are we thinking of a historical figure who lived a long time ago and had words of wisdom then? Or do we see him rather as the living resurrected Lord who is alive right now, invites us into conversation with us and has a word for us today? Whom is it that we actually seek? In order to break through with her, Jesus takes the same kind of approach that we see the angels use when they talk to Zachariah and he is told that his wife will now have a baby. Or when the angel appears to Joseph to give him reassurance not to lay Mary aside, but rather to take her as his wife. It's the same words that Jesus will use with, when talking to Simon Peter following his failure and his denial. Jesus utters one word, Mary. He calls her by his name. It is the most incredible thing when we're called by name. When we hear a knock on the door, we have no idea who it is. But when they call our name, we suddenly realize that maybe they're an acquaintance or even a friend. It is so easy at times like this to feel overlooked, ignored, unknown, alone. And yet when someone calls out our name, we suddenly realize that we are known, we are recognized. Someone does actually see. We worship a God who both sees us and knows us. This is the testimony of Hagar in the Old Testament, where when an angel appears to her and calls her by name, her response is, you are the God who sees me. God invites us to call on his name and as well as calling us by name. And that is a remarkable thing. In the book of Psalms, it says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will glorify me. In the book of John, Jesus says, ask in my name. He doesn't just simply know us by name. He invites us to call on his name. Commentating on these verses, F.W. Borum tells the story of King Edward and Queen Alexandra. When the king was still the Prince of Wales and his wife was the princess, the Prince of Wales fell desperately ill. On December the 10th, the Sunday was set aside for the nation to seek the Lord in prayer for the prince's life as it seemed to swing from one back from life to death as if his life was hanging by a single unstable thread. That morning on that Sunday, the princess opened her Bible and was greeted by the words, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will glorify me. She penned a note to the vicar of Sandringham saying, my husband being somewhat better, I am hoping to come to church. However, I must leave, I fear, before the service is concluded that I may be by his bedside. Could you not say a few words of prayer in the early part of the service so that I may join you in prayer? The vicar was deeply moved by this request and as the princess walked into the congregation, all of them were struck by her presence. They prayed for the Lord, uh, before the Lord, to the Lord on behalf of the prince. By December the 14th, to some eyes it appeared he had got worse, but actually to the trained medical eye, this was the turning point. The crisis was now over. He was actually getting better. And by December the 25th, he was largely recovered. The following year, the princess made a presentation to the church of a plaque. It's there to this day, 14th of December, 1871. When I was in trouble, I called upon the Lord and he heard me. To the glory of God, a thank offering in his name. This is a time when we can call on the name of our Lord. Of course, it's a time when we also need to remember what he has also done. 30 years after this event, the prince was crowned on the June the 26th, 1902. 
Those who are familiar, familiar with the coronation service noticed a startling innovation in the words. The words, I called upon the Lord in the day of my trouble and he heard me, were added into the ceremony. The one in charge of that ceremony remarked afterwards that the words were added by the ex king's express command and written in by his own hand. He wanted to remember what the Lord had done for him in the day of his trouble. Through the cross of Christ, it is not just the fact that we, God now knows us by name and he allows us to call on his name. He also gives us a name. It doesn't guarantee any outcome in our prayer, but it does guarantee access. Through the cross of Christ, we have access and the resurrection, we have access to the one who is able to turn things around. And even when our prayers are not answered in the way that we would wish, we still find comfort in his presence and reassurance for what is to come. Let us call on the name of the Lord today, remembering whose name it is that we bear, what hope we have, and let us also begin to ask that others may find that name through which all of us may be saved.